Hi guys, this is Nora Ash, and this is Pacing the Two Bestsellers, a comparative analysis of the storylines between Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and The Hunger Games. This video is going to be discussing the inciting incident arc that happens in both books. What is the inciting incident? The inciting incident is the hero's call to adventure. So far, we've established the hero's roles and desires in the ordinary life, and we've outlined the villain that exists in this world that has already been causing problems for our hero. So, currently, we have the characters, we have the settings, and we have some motivations, but we don't actually have a story yet, and that's because the inciting incident hasn't happened. Without the inciting incident, the adventure never comes to be. When the inciting incident hits, it serves as a catalyst to spur our hero into action. It serves as a standing invitation to the supernatural realm. It shakes everything up enough that our hero has to respond to it and has to embark on their journeys. So in The Ordinary Life, there may or may not have been prior calls to adventure before the inciting incident. Katniss could have volunteered to enter the Hunger Games, but she doesn't. Harry Potter recalls various interactions with magic, but none of these moments spur the hero to move from the realm of the ordinary into the extraordinary the same way that the inciting incident does. Why? Because the inciting incident is something that the hero cannot ignore. Okay, just real quick, I'm going to quickly break down the general numbers when it comes to pacing a novel. The Ordinary Life should take up the first half of the first act. Roughly 12.5% of the book is supposed to be dedicated to The Ordinary Life. At the 12.5% mark, that's when the inciting incident begins. And at the 25% mark, after the first act is completed, that's when our hero will officially move into the supernatural realm and cross the threshold. That will come in a later video. So at the 12.5% mark, when the inciting incidences occur, usually it's considered a point, so at the narrative arc it's the inciting incident which leads to the rising action. I prefer to think of it more as an inciting incident arc. I call it an arc because it's not simply a call to adventure. There's a whole host of actions and reactions informed by the B-plot that occur at this portion of the book which propel both the reader and the hero forward into the new realm. Because this inciting incident propels the hero into the new realm, it needs to serve as something that the hero cannot ignore. So with that in mind, the structure of the inciting incident arc goes something as follows. There's the A-plot impact moment. There's the B-plot reactions to the A-plot impact moment. There's the character's miniature battle or conflict, followed by the complicating twist. And finally, it leads to acceptance of their fate, which will then transition them into the journey portion of the book. So the A-plot impact moment would be the moment that most people describe as the inciting incident, because it's the moment where our hero is shook up enough that it's evident that they're about to embark on a journey. The inciting incident is typically when an invitation is extended to the hero to enter the realm of the supernatural. So for Harry Potter, it's when he gets his letter. For Katniss Everdeen, it's when her sister's name is drawn from the reaping bowl and she has the opportunity to volunteer in her place. So when the A-plot impact moment occurs, following immediately after is the B-plot reactions of the main character. So Katniss, with her B-plot being to protect her sister, as soon as her sister's name is drawn from the reaping bowl, it's almost an automatic reaction that she volunteers in her place. For Harry Potter, he's always known something is a little bit off about him, so when he gets this mysterious letter that has the Dursleys all beside themselves, he realizes there's something significant about that letter and he's going to do what it takes to get it, even if it means sacrificing his new bedroom. At both of these inciting incidences, with the letter and with Prim's name being drawn from the reaping bowl, suddenly the villain's world, which is ultimately the realm of the supernatural in these books, is bearing down on our hero and the hero has to react to it. These lead to our B-plot informed reactions. So the inciting incident begins with the A-plot impact moment, and the main character, which is informed by their B-plot which was established in The Ordinary Life, so Harry's desire to find a surrogate family and belong, and Katniss, who has a desire to protect her family at all costs, they then react in such a way which will propel the story forward. It's important to note that without the B-plots which were established in The Ordinary Life, the inciting incident would not have the same reactions from our characters. 
In fact, the inciting incidences may not have been inciting incidences at all. For example, if Katniss didn't care about her sister or protecting her family, when her name got drawn from the reaping bowl, Katniss might have been sad, but she might have just gone about her day. If she hadn't have been in the role of protector, Katniss would not have reacted the same way to the inciting incident. But she is a protector, so she does react the way her B-plot commands her to. Similarly, if Harry Potter had been treated well and loved, when the Dursleys had got that letter and decided to throw it out, he might have just simply shrugged because he already had a family where he belonged. But because he's been treated so poorly and desires so badly to work out why he doesn't fit in, he now is desperate to find out what this mysterious letter could mean. And so, because of both of these B-plots, they will react to the impact moment in a way that propels the plot forward. Now, once they've reacted with their B-plots, so Katniss has volunteered in her place, and Harry has tried desperately to get his hands on a letter, comes the complicating twist moment. But both of these inciting instances come with an extra dash of surprise that complicates the journey further. Harry doesn't just get a letter to a wizarding school, he gets informed about his dark, tragic past, that his parents were murdered by the most famous dark wizard of all time, who he defeated. Suddenly, Harry's feeling this weight on his shoulders about him entering this magical realm because he doesn't know anything. In The Hunger Games, it's not just Katniss planning on entering the arena as a tribute and planning to survive. The complications come when the person who she owes a life debt to, Peter Malark, has his name drawn from the Reaping Bowl too. So with Peter also entering the arena, Katniss isn't just another tribute keen to survive. She's entering the arena with her humanity still intact in the form of Peter. So these inciting incidents come with the uneasy conclusion that our hero, despite their trepidations, are going to have to enter the supernatural world anyway. And they don't really have a choice in the matter. That was the inciting incident arc, which once again to summarize is the A-plot impact moment, the B-plot reactions, the conflict or twist that comes with the B-plot reactions, and the finally, the acceptance of their fate, where they know that they are going to be entering the realm of the supernatural, whether they like it or not. The next video is going to be discussing the hero's journey and crossing the threshold. Tune in next time. Thanks.